Welcome to our first elementary chapel in the clouds. This is a rather unique way to be worshiping the Lord, but thank goodness that we can be bonded together this way because of the love that he has for us. So before we get started, let's open up in a word of prayer. prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the gift of this day and the gift of technology and all the many ways that you've sent to us to be united together um, despite the, that we can't be together in person. Lord, this is your time, a time where we long to just come to you humbly. Uh, some of us might even be still in our pajamas, Lord, but that doesn't keep us from being able to talk to you, to worship you, to praise you, to adore you, and to share um, our love back to you the way that you give it to us so freely. Jesus, as we enter this holy week um, and think about what you did for us on the cross, let us um, just continue to look in our hearts and grow our love for you, and in that growth in love, that we can love each other well, uh, whether we're together or apart by miles, Lord. Jesus, we are, we are united in love because of you, and we thank you and praise you for that. It's in your holy and precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now, I'm going to turn chapel over to Mrs. Palladino and her bunch over at her house to lead us in worshiping the Lord in song and dance. Back to you, back to you, Mrs. Palladino. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our elementary school chapel here in our living rooms. Um, today for our worship, I have the help of Jude and Mr. Palladino on guitar. Um, we are going to start out with a um, favorite, one that we started in January, and I think it is just so neat how we've been learning these scripture songs this year. This one, if you remember, is Philippians 4, 6, and seven. So you can get your um, hand motions ready. Junior Cougars can stand up to get their wiggles out. We are always standing in this one and um, doing all the movements. Jude's going to help me out with that. So are we ready? Mm -hmm. Junior Cougar Chapel, although it's one that has been widely sung in a lot of churches lately. And if anyone's been following on Facebook, there's been a family called the Getty Family doing live hymn sings with their whole family, and they taught us some hand motions. This song is called His Mercy Is More. Jude and I are going to teach you the hand motions for the chorus. Are you ready, Jude? So, do you want to play along for just the chorus? Sure. Okay, ready? We're going to go. Praise the Lord. Great. 
great. I think that you're going to be able to follow along. We are going to sing the verse and then the chorus following every single verse. So I do hope you'll all join us together. calendar and it's the week when Jesus walked through and you know eventually died on the cross was buried and rose again from the dead and so as I prayed through what the Lord had for us for this chapel which is a pretty special chapel because it's our first in the clouds one but also because it's the it's chapel where we get to kind of focus on the truth of Jesus and his love for us this is kind of where God led me so bear with me as I journey this with you in Genesis 1, 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of, him, of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So now, in this, in this experiment, this penny is going to re represent us, or me, or you. And remember, we were created in God's image. So that's going to go right there, just a glass pie plate right here. Now, in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This green water, nice green water, represents sin and just how in life we are covered in sin. So now I'm going to pour the water into the, just a little, some of the water into the dish enough to cover us in sin. There we have it. Okay, so we're covered in sin. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This white candle is representative of Jesus. 
And we're going to put that right there in the middle of our sin and next to us. This represents Jesus living and loving us in the world. John 9, 5 says, here we go, let me do this first. Okay. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The flame represents the life of Jesus in the world. Okay. So now I'm going to take... I'm going to take this glass, this jar, and I'm going to put it over the light of the world, Jesus, and we're going to watch what happens. Because in Romans 5, it says, But God shows his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you take a really close look, you can see that all the green water, which remembers is us surrounded in sin, is being absorbed. Again, Romans 5, 8, But God shows his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We saw that in this, not only did the water or our sin get sucked up, but the flame of the candle went out. That's symbolic of Jesus dying on the cross for us on Good Friday. On the cross, Jesus gave up his life and the flame went out so we could take our sins, so he could take our sins on himself, and we could be free. And now, we can be free from sin, and now we can be with him always. John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. Jesus' death on the cross did that for us, and because of that, we can be with God forever. So as you reflect on Good Friday, Hopefully you can think about all of, all of what Jesus has done for us and uncovering our sin and taking it on himself. So now we're going to recap that experiment at close range so you can really watch the effects of it. This is the penny. The penny is symbolic of us created in God's image. This is the green water that's representative of our sin that surrounds us. Make sure we get it on there. The candle is Jesus, and the light reminds us that he is the light of the world, and he came to earth for us. And now this jar is going to go over top, and we're going to see what happens. As you see our sin being sucked up, you also see Jesus' flame going out. The light of the world has now died on the cross for us on Good Friday, but we are no longer covered by sin because Jesus took it for us. Thank you so much, and I'm going to send it now back to Mrs. Palladino. Hi, everyone. I wanted to thank Mrs. Brenner for that awesome lesson. Um, when she was putting that candle on the pie plate in the middle of all the sin that we had all around us, I was reminded of the song that we learned at the beginning of the year, and yes, we sang it at our Christmas concert, but I thought it's perfectly appropriate to sing today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His light went out so that he could give that light to us. So we all love this song. Let's sing it with all of our hearts to close up our time at chapel today.
So let's close our time in prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for giving us this way to worship together. I do pray that as we enter into this Easter weekend, we would all have time to remember and to think about what it means that Jesus was sent to die for our sins. I thank you that you were willing to give up your light so that you could give it to us, that you were willing to give up your perfect righteousness and to take on all of our sins so that we could be righteous. We look forward to the day, Lord, when we can all be together back at school, and we thank you for how you're taking care of all of us in these days of waiting. Would you please bless our days and go before us? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs>